Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, welcome and welcome back reptilians to another conspiracy theory video. The reptile world has been known for some of its crazy misconceptions. So first, we're gonna start with the conspiracy that toads give you warts. That's false, they don't give you warts. I know toads aren't actually reptiles, but growing up, this one was huge for me. Growing up, I lived in sort of a foresty, wooded area, and I absolutely loved going and catching toads and bringing them into my house and scaring my mom with it, and she didn't appreciate it, but we thought it was really funny. And my grandma and my mom would always tell us that toads gave you warts if they peed on you to try to deter my brother and I from bringing those toads in the house. It never did, and we never got warts so that's not actually a thing this next conspiracy is everywhere from child's cartoons to paint commercials we're going to talk about chameleons a lot of people think that chameleons will change their colors to blend in with their surroundings but that's actually false too they don't do that either chameleons like many other reptiles will actually just change their colors based on their mood so an angry or territorial chameleon will be a different color than a chameleon that's calm and relaxed and asleep, which will be a different color than a chameleon that is in the middle of breeding season. They just change their colors based off of their mood, more like a mood ring as opposed to blending in with your bright blue walls. Now that that one's been debunked, let's go on to our next conspiracy. This one is all about rattlesnakes. Some people believe that rattlesnakes get a new button every year, but this one's also false. Rattlesnakes actually get a new button every time that they shed. And in fact, their rattles are actually made up of the dead skin cells from when they shed. And as with any other snake, rattlesnakes can most definitely shed more than once a year. So counting those buttons is not gonna tell you how old that rattlesnake is. And while we're on the subject of rattlesnakes, another common misconception, Rattlesnakes aren't going to rattle every single time that they strike. It's very widely thought that rattlesnakes are going to rattle every single time before they strike, but that is not true. If you, if you step on a rattlesnake, it's not going to take the time to rattle at you. It's just going to bite you. So keep that in mind. Don't step on rattlesnakes. And while we're on the subject of venomous creatures, let's talk about the largest reptile in the world the Komodo dragon. A lot of people think that Komodo dragons are only venomous because of the bacteria that they produce. But there's actually been a lot of back and forth about this. But I guess it's come to light in recent years that they actually do have venom. They have venom glands and they are venomous reptiles. So next time you're in the Indonesian islands of Komodo, try not to get bit. This next theory revolves around snakes. Again, it is believed that only venomous snakes have teeth. But all snakes have teeth. They actually require these to hold their prey in place when they're about to eat. Especially constrictor snakes who kill their prey by suffocation. In order to suffocate that prey, they have to hold it in place or else that's not going to work out well. But as we know, the venomous snakes are going to have fangs and that is going to be their venom delivery system. Just keep in mind that anything with a mouth, venomous or non-venomous, can and will bite you if they feel threatened. And especially with pythons, if they bite you and they hold on, you're actually at more risk of hurting them if if you yank and panic because it could actually pull those teeth out of their mouth and we don't want to do that we don't want to panic and hurt the snake so I guess the takeaway is just be nice to your snakes and learn to read those cues and if you think a snake is getting defensive and is looking like it's gonna bite you just just back off and if you do get bit don't panic just run your hand under some cold water and usually that will help to encourage the snake to let go Next up, we're going to talk all about turtles and tortoises. Many people believe that these reptiles can't fill their shells. This is insanely false. A turtle or tortoise's shells are made of living tissue. They can feel that shell whether it's getting hurt or you're just knocking on it. They can feel it. This huge misconception has caused lots of issues with tortoises, especially large tortoises that people keep in their backyards. As you know, tortoises tend to dig and if kept in a backyard, they will dig under the fence. A lot of times people have actually drilled holes into tortoises shells to try to put hooks to chain them up in the backyard. And that is absolutely terrible because that turtle can fill its shell and that 
is causing pain to that turtle. So please don't injure your turtle shells. Don't carve into your turtle shells. Don't drill into the shells. They can indeed feel those. These guys actually have a lot of nerve endings in those shells and as such they're super sensitive. If you've ever walked up behind a tortoise or a turtle and you touch its shell, you'll get some kind of reaction because they can feel them. This next set of theories is all about reptiles in general. First, it's widely thought that all reptiles lay eggs, but that is in fact not true. A lot of reptiles actually give live birth. This includes all boas, vipers such as rattlesnakes, three different species of skinks give live birth, which includes the blue tongue skink, garter snakes, and the Jackson's chameleon, which is really strange. The other chameleons all lay eggs, but the Jackson's chameleon gives birth to live young. This is another one that kind of hits close to home because growing up, I always thought that if it was a reptile, it laid eggs. And it wasn't until into my adult life that I learned that not all reptiles lay eggs, which is crazy, but super cool. Conspiracy. Reptiles are only pets for boys. This looks kind of silly, but I've actually heard mothers telling their children this. Reptiles are for anyone. They're not just for boys. Anyone can like anything that they like, obviously, but I just thought this was kind of a silly video, so I would just throw that one in there because I have heard it. Reptiles make really easy pets. Yes, certain reptiles can be pretty easy in terms of if you get a snake, you only feed it once a week. But for the most part, they're not easy pets. They're going to be just as difficult as any other pet, if not more difficult. A lot of reptiles are going to require an extensive diet. They're going to need specific lighting and heating and specific sized tanks. And they need vet visits and dig boxes and sufficient amounts of calcium and vitamins. And a lot of people will buy reptiles for their children as like a first pet. And I've mentioned this briefly before that I don't think that it's the best thing to buy your child their own pet and expect them to take care of it. Please don't do that. I do think that they make really cool pets to teach children about pets. As long as you as the parent know that it's your responsibility to take care of that pet, not that child's. Reptiles just aren't pets that you're going to be able to throw into a tank and leave alone. They require a lot of work, especially if you get a pet that could possibly become defensive and possibly become nippy and bitey. You're going to need to show that pet attention pretty regularly to tame them down. In addition, a lot of these pets are going to be super flighty the first few times that they're handled, making them, again, not an easy pet. Most of the time, if you get a puppy, you're going to be able to pick up that puppy and love that puppy, and it's going to want to be next to you. Reptiles are not like that. They're going to have to be handled down to a point where they're going to be okay with being taken out of their tanks. And if you get a baby and they're super flighty, you run the risk of that pet escaping and having to track down a reptile in your house. So 100% I don't think that they're easy starter pets unless you are ready for reptile, you know what it entails. And then of course there are beginner reptiles for that, if that makes sense. Reptiles will only get as big as their tank. Your tank size isn't going to determine how big your reptile is going to get. You're not going to be able to put a tegu in a 20 gallon tank and it stay tiny. It doesn't work that way. What's going to happen is as that animal gets bigger, it's going to have less and less space and it's going to be very cramped and very unhappy. If your animal gets to a point where it can't perform its basic functions in that tank, you need to get it a bigger tank. You probably needed to get it a bigger tank a long time ago. Its growth isn't going to stop to match the size of the tank. If you're done with your reptile, the most humane way to get rid of it is to release it into the wild. There are so many things wrong with this. <laughs> please don't release your reptiles into the wild. First of all, if you're gonna get a reptile, please understand that most reptiles are gonna live for a very long time and you're gonna have to provide it with an extensive amount of care to make sure that it is a thriving animal. If for some reason you can no longer take care of that animal, please rehome it. Please find a good home for that animal, someone that you know is gonna take care of it. Never, ever, ever, ever release your reptile into the wild. Because of this common misconception, 
misconception, things like Florida's invasive species issue happens. I'm not saying this is the only reason for this problem, but this is one of the problems is people would get these animals that get so big and they weren't prepared for them like iguanas and tegus and reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, and they'd release them into the wild. Places like Florida have such a perfectly tropical climate that when you release these kinds of animals, they thrive in this environment. It has a high humidity, it has very dense forests where they can hide, and these invasive species are able to crawl off into these forests and repopulate like crazy. I can make a whole video on the invasive species issues in Florida by itself, so we're not gonna dig that deep into all that, but do not release your animals into the wild if you're tired of them. Just that statement just makes my skin crawl. Please don't get tired of your animals. <laughs> Our last set of conspiracies is all about snakes. We've already done a lot about snakes, but now it's time for more. Again, there's a lot of misconceptions about snakes. First up, snakes are slimy. I understand why this is a misconception because they have that glossy sheen and some of them even have like an oil spill look to them. So it can give off that look of looking slimy, but they aren't. They are in no way wet unless they were in water and even then the water just kind of drips off of them. So they are definitely not slimy. But I do remember when I was in high school, I think early high school, my science teacher brought in her pet corn snake and basically she brought it in to disprove that they were slimy because a lot of kids thought that they were so we all got to pet her corn snake and it was in fact not slimy. Next up, snakes can hypnotize people. Hey, I seen that movie. This is another really silly one. I'm assuming it comes from the very well-known movie, The Jungle Book, and just the overall fact that snakes a lot of times are portrayed as being these evil creatures, or maybe even those videos you see of snake charmers taming, taming the cobras, but snakes cannot hypnotize people. That's not a thing. Um, yeah, that's not a thing. Our last conspiracy, and probably the most frightening of them all, is that pythons can strangle their humans. Most of the time when I hear this being joked about or being told to other people, people are referring to the ball pythons that you see in the pet store, and that's just not true. Ball pythons are very strong, don't get me wrong. Their whole body is essentially a muscle, and yes, they do like to wrap around anywhere that they can get a hold of, especially your neck, because they basically treat you like a giant tree, but when that happens, you just pull them off. They're not gonna be stronger than you. Like I always say, I have the weakest arms of any human ever, and I can pull my ball python off of me most of the time. So in terms of larger pythons, reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, and especially African rock pythons, those are gonna be a different story because they are huge. These aren't snakes that you should have if you don't have the experience for them anyway, but if you're handling a full grown 20 foot snake, you should probably have someone with you that can help you if you get into a bad situation. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Reptile Conspiracy that is it guys i absolutely love shane dawson and i love his whole conspiracy style and i just wanted to do that sort of thing for reptiles i just wanted to present some really cool misconceptions about reptiles in a more fun way instead of just the same old list style so come follow me on instagram and twitter don't forget to like subscribe and turn on that bell thank you so much to Anne marie lyons zero robinette's menagerie bite me one more time J Boys Boas and Connor Butler for following me and Instagram going through like a whole bunch of stuff. You guys are the business. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. You blend in with your bright blue walls. Bright blue walls. They just change their colors to blend in. Nope, they don't do that. That's the whole point of this. While some people believe that rattlesnakes, actually no. Some people believe that rattlesnakes get a some people believe that rattlesnakes get... <laughs> You're going to edit this. <laughs> so next time you're in the Indonesian islands of Komodo... So next time you're in the Indonesian islands of Komodo, try not to get bit.
I just can't. This is so hard. <laughs> Especially constrictors. Especially constrictor. Especially constrictor snakes. Constrictor snakes. Constrictor snakes. Constrictor snakes.